Ethereum has done something very special. Ethereum issuance has turned negative for the first time as NFT mania persists, meaning that more Ethereum was burned than Ethereum created. After the implementation of EIP-1559, every time a transaction is made, Ethereum is burned. And a big misconception about EIP-1559 is that it made Ethereum deflationary. This is incorrect. Really, what happens is Ethereum continues at the moment to be an inflationary asset. However, during times of high network activity, activity, we may see a deflationary day. So before EIP 1559, Ethereum would just be created forever. But of course, this is a problem in crypto. We want a hard cap or something that is deflationary. So after EIP 1559, Ethereum still continues to be created. This will not stop. There will be no hard cap on Ethereum. But as it's created, when people are using the network and burning Ethereum, we may see it slow down. But we actually did see for the first time on September 3rd, a deflationary day. And on September 3rd, around 13,485 Ethereum were issued, while over 13,838 Ethereum were burned. Consequently, the net emission was around negative 353 Ethereum tokens. And this is a very big deal for a few reasons. As mentioned, it's not a good idea to have a coin with an unlimited supply. But on the opposite end, the problem is when you have a limited supply, eventually newly minted coins run out. This is a problem that Bitcoin will face in around the year 2140. And the answer to that problem is that hopefully, or I guess likely, the miners will be compensated with transaction fees alone. And another project that has a limited supply or will have a limited supply eventually is Cardano. Eventually, those staking and adding blocks to the blockchain will not be compensated with newly created Cardano. So what will happen to Cardano when it all runs out? I have a video on that as well. It's in the description below. You can go ahead and watch it after this video. So in this case with Ethereum, there is no hard cap. Ethereum will continue to be created forever and stakers in the future, they will be compensated. But at the same time, Ethereum will be burned. And this is what's going on right now with EIP 1559. It is not a deflationary asset Ethereum, but it can be deflationary at certain times. However, there is a belief that when Ethereum 2.0 arrives, Ethereum for the most part will be deflationary. Because with Ethereum 2.0, the rate of new issuance will depend on the amount of Ethereum that is staked. The more staked coins, the higher the issuance rate. But this also means the more the network is being used. So even though if we have more people staking and the issuance rate is higher, it would likely mean at the same time that more people are using the network, meaning more Ethereum is being burned than Ethereum that is created. And this brings in another very important aspect of the future of Ethereum. It will be potentially a store of value. Right now at the moment, there are those that believe Ethereum is a store of value. Of course, this is up for debate. But if it becomes deflationary, then it definitely can be a store of value. But store of value on its own for all coins is not a big deal. It has to have utility first. For example, Ethereum is a smart contract platform. So if no one is using Ethereum smart contracts or no one is buying NFTs on Ethereum, it doesn't matter if it's deflationary. It does not have much value. And we saw this gimmick over the last year of these brand new projects. Their main number one marketing tactic was, look at us guys, we're deflationary. There is nothing special about a hard cap or being deflationary if the product is not good. Cardano has a hard cap, but Cardano's value will hopefully derive from people using the smart contracts. If no one in the future is using Cardano smart contracts, it doesn't matter if they have a hard cap. And when we look at the price of Ethereum or Cardano, they're in their very early stages. How is Ethereum, how is it worth a $460 billion market cap? How is Cardano worth a $91 billion market cap? These projects are so early. And the reason is because as mentioned in a previous video, everyone is looking towards the future. Everyone for Ethereum is looking at Ethereum 2.0 and everything we just spoke about and its deflationary model. And with Cardano, everyone is looking forward 
to smart contracts. And it's really the same for all of these altcoins. We are early stages. We have these market caps of 15 billion, 12 billion, 10 billion, because everyone is looking towards the future. Now, in terms of Ethereum, can it reach $10,000 per coin? This is a question that is often brought up. This is always a target. 10,000 for Ethereum. And I believe that it can, but not on its own. For Ethereum to reach 10,000, it will have to follow along with the rest of the market. In my opinion, most importantly, Bitcoin. I just do not see a situation where Ethereum goes to 10,000, but Bitcoin stays at 50,000 or even Bitcoin decreases. Same thing for Cardano. I don't see a situation where Cardano goes to six, eight, ten dollars if Bitcoin remains stagnant or even if Bitcoin decreases. They move together, they move in tandem, at least as I make this video towards the end of 2021. And a huge misconception right now with Ethereum is that because the gas fees are so high, everyone is leaving Ethereum. It is the complete opposite. More people are using Ethereum than ever. And when we look at these gas prices, what does it really mean? High gas prices means that many people are using the network. There is high network activity. So when you see gas prices high, the first thought is, wow, look at Ethereum, it's dead. But it's actually surprisingly the opposite. It is more alive than ever. However, because the gas fees are so high, not everyone will use Ethereum. Big money will stay. They don't have a problem paying two, three, four hundred dollars for a fee. But this is a great opportunity for other projects to capture market share, specifically Solana and Cardano, especially right now with the NFT craze. So big money will for now, especially right now, they are staying with Ethereum. If let's say, you know, Ethereum still has these crazy high gas fees in 10 years from now, I think everyone will be gone by then, right? Even big money, but they have their time ahead of them, you know, maybe a year, two or three years to really get things right. While these other projects are working on increasing their network effects. So at the moment right now, big money is staying on Ethereum, but this is a great opportunity for other platforms to capitalize. Again, specifically Cardano and Solana right now with this NFT craze. And we are already seeing it more specifically with Solana. I do believe we will see it as well after smart contracts, more demand on Cardano at the retail level. And if you are brand new into this space, or maybe you're not new, you've been in this space for a while, but only in Ethereum, but you want to learn more about Solana and Cardano, I have three videos for you in the comments and the description down below. The first video is how to set up a Cardano wallet. The second video is how to set up a Solana wallet. And the third video is how to find upcoming NFT drops for Solana and Cardano. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like the video. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.